Hi everybody, welcome to the channel, Andy Cart here. Thank you very much for checking out today's video because this may just be the test. You never thought you would see the comparison between a 58 degree and a hybrid, an 18 degree hybrid. So 58 versus 18, there's a 40 degree difference between these two shots. So you're probably thinking, what the hell are you doing? Well, here's what we're faced with. And by the side of a green, we've got an uphill approach shot now for my second shot on a par three. I want to get up and down, but also I, want to, I don't want to lose control of this golf ball. Behind the flag, there's another bunker. If I leave it short, I'm on the slope and it could roll back down to my feet. So we want to play the percentage shot. We want to play the, the shot that's going to, let's say, guarantee us a four, but open the door to a three. So quite often when I'm faced with this sort of situation, I often grab a lob wedge because when you're chipping up to a green, you, re you lose a little bit of spin on the ball once it lands. So I often take an extra club, which would be the lob wedge to send the ball a little bit higher to counteract the, the spin that comes into the ball, maybe into the green, maybe off a 50 degree or a 54. But then I was thinking, well, this is all perfectly kind of manicured. It's a beautiful surface to put on but it's just a bit too far back. I often teach guys that will maybe pull out the seven iron and I actually argue with the seven iron and think, well, you could really carry this a little bit too far. You could carry it onto the front edge and it's gonna go way too far. Or because you're worried about carrying it on the front edge, it's very easy to thin it. And as soon as you thin it, you've lost complete control of the outcome of the shot. The hybrid, I'll be honest, it's not a shot that I've ever really used, but it's a shot that I'm just slowly starting to think, could I put this in the bag? Famously, Todd Hamilton won the Open Championship at Troon because he just played this all the way around. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I mean, he's not been seen since. I'm not sure where he is. Todd, if you're watching, congratulations. But the hybrid kind of chip and run, you're not, worried, you're not really worried about a landing area. You're just solely thinking about how hard to hit it. The 18 degrees will just send the ball, just popping off the ground a little bit as it takes off. And you get the nice little ping and you're not worried about thinning it or fatting it. You're just using the sole of the club and just putting it along the surface and then off it goes. Huh. Stop there. Okay, not bad. It's gone a bit too far. Probably got about 10 foot past the hole. So you've got to try and start to gauge the distance control, but you could see how much more simple that technique was. Stance. So I got the stance a lot narrower. I got the weight slightly favored onto my left side, taking the hips out of it and just kind of starting with that little pendulum action as you go back and through. So really just not using any wrist, not trying to add speed. Obviously I'm not on this shot now worried about trying to create height because I know it's not going to create height. You often maybe stand here with a 58 degree and think, I need to pop this up in the air to make it stop quickly. And that's when the hands get involved. You start to panic, you catch the ground before the ball or you thin it over the back. Whereas here, everything just feels so calm and tranquil. Just bosh, bosh. It's like a, I'm not even hitting it that hard because the face of a hybrid has just got that little bit of a, a little bit of a springboard off the ball. So I'm not really smashing it like I would have, like I would have to have done with a putter. But you just start to see how, just like pushing the, let the hips and the shoulders turn together. There's no stress on strike. Roll it up the hill. Third time's a charm, pretty good shot. I would, I would probably say that not one of those are within a gimme range or I'm definitely gonna make a par from it. But if you're, in a, if you're, a, if you're not comfortable with your chipping and you've got a shot on this hole, that's the easiest way to have played it, isn't it? That shot there as an absolutely guaranteed four rather than a five or a six and the occasional three. It's lovely that. Okay, this however is a totally different shot. 58 degree, I've got to get up. What's that about? Maybe four feet of four feet of fringe to go up. I'm gonna try and get a nice quick stop on the ball, quick grab. So then the ball can nestle itself nice and close to the hole. But if I've got the confidence to swing it a little bit longer, Make a nice stra oh, oh, that was beautiful. I'll be honest, you tell, you stand there now and say, Carter, I will give you a hundred dollars to knock that inside a three foot. I wouldn't be able to do it, I'd probably fat it. So I can try and think about how amateur golfers would feel when you're, this is the 18th hole, you're by the side of the green, bogey, you shoot under your handicap, the handicap tumbles, 
and you stood there and you start thinking, popping it up into the air and you want to get really cute with it because you played well today. And then suddenly, you're in the bunker because you know that you want to get it up and over that little ridge and the hands do that. Oh, that is, that's not a nice one. If it comes off, you literally look like Seve. If it doesn't come off, you look like the worst version of yourself. It's just a horrible one, isn't it? So you, with this type of shot, you've got, to be, you've got to be active in your lower body. Even for this type of shot, it's a lot shorter, but you've got to be active in the hips and the shoulders as they rotate through because you need that motion. You need the hips to rotate so the wrists don't work. The better you turn your body, and this goes out throughout the whole golf swing, the better you turn your body, the better the hands are, the more the hands will behave during the swing. They won't be as aggressive and they will not be as active. Let's go try out one more instance for this shot because I think it's I think it's vital. I think it's a great shot to have in your armory. Now we're in a totally different scenario. We're coming from slightly thicker grass. We've got a little bit of fringe to get over. And as you can see, it's a very long distance to the hole. Again, me personally, I'd probably go 58 or 54 degree. I want to try and land it into the down slope with a bit of check and then let it release. I see these shots as if I was a tour pro. I play them as your average teaching pro. So you've got to start to reassess what is the best option. So 58 degree for me, middle of the stance. Again, get utilize the body. Let the hips and the shoulders work together. I'm going to try and land it just over halfway. Normally with a 58 degree, I try, try and land it a lot closer to the floor. Well, maybe let's say three quarters of the way, but because it's going downhill, I pulled that back in. So I'm landing it about two thirds of the way there, middle of my stance, hips and shoulders turned together. Nice little shot. Oh, dug in on its second bounce. Go on. It needed more, it needed more. Lovely strike. Let's see how this one plays. It's a little hybrid this time. I'm going to play with the break. I can see a left to right break. So I'm going to go left of the flag. Just, just no, thr no frills really, isn't it? Just pop it onto the green. Have I hit that too hard? It's going up the grain, up the slopes. That slowed it down. It's taking the break. Oh my God, stop, stop, stop. Oh, oh that's decent. Guys, sometimes when I'm doing these videos, I find shots in my own, my own armory. I didn't even realize I had. I'm trying that again. That was lovely. Just a little hip and shoulder action, no wrist. Just keep the keep the club moving, keep the body moving. Off it goes. He's going up the slope, up the grain, slowing down, and then taking that break from left to right. A bit further on that one wasn't quite as good, but you can see the outcomes are. The outcomes are pretty good relative to where the flag is, and also maybe relative to how many shots you have on a golf course. If you're in this situation again. Try and start thinking, how many times would you have walked off with a double bogey? It's easily done. How many times have you got up and down? And if the double bogey outweighs the up and down pars, then you're edging towards double bogey. You're not making enough bogeys from this situation. Whereas I think this club could be a massive help to you. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Something completely different. It's not often you get to do a comparison between a 58 degree and an 80 or 19 degree, sorry. So it's you can use any golf club in any situation. Be open-minded, start thinking about what's the easiest shot for you to play for the best possible outcome. Guys, thanks for watching. See you again very soon. Always a pleasure. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. God, I think I'm getting heat stroke. <laughs>